Now I'm writing home to my loved ones about these conditions. They're shocked and appalled, but they want to read more. My dad had just read a book by Salem Pax, who started a blog when the bombs started falling on Baghdad. So we had the idea to start a blog. Now there's no computers or internet or anything like that in the jail. And we couldn't let the guards find out because the guards were murdering the prisoners as well. Not the big bad gang members. People like Brian Crenshaw, classified as a partially blind shoplifter, failed to produce his ID for the evening meal. The guards pulverised him, broke his neck. He went into a coma and died. He was caught on CCTV and his family members got millions in compensation. Scott Norberg, mentally ill man, wandering the neighbourhood. The cops brought him in. The guards started pulverising him. A female guard said, stop beating him, his face has turned blue. They kept beating him and electroshocking him with taser guns. Later on, the prisoners yelled, why are you still beating him? He's already dead. And even after that, they were electroshocking him and still beating him. Millions were paid out to his family members because that got caught on CCTV. My question for you guys is, what do you think that the boss of the jail, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, did to the guards who were found responsible for the deaths of those inmates in the federal court system? Anyone got any ideas? Promoted them? Is that what you said? Brilliant. Yes, you got it right, right away. He promoted them and gave them a pay rise. Because of the human rights violations committed by this sheriff, Obama's tried to take away some of his powers. He said, I'm an elected official, I'm going to do whatever I want. Students chained themselves to his building last year. They had them all arrested and thrown in his jail. A guard said to me, the world has no idea what's really going on in here. So I decided that was about to change. A little pencil sharpened on the wall, I started to write it all down. Couldn't mail these things out because the guards can open your mail. Recruited my aunt. She would come and visit me at the weekends. The visits in maximum security are through plexiglass windows, like in Silence of the Lambs when Clarice Starling first meets Hannibal Lecter. So I couldn't release anything to her either through visit. But what I could do was release property to her through the guards. So I hid what I wrote in legal paperwork and letters, took that to the visitation guards. First time I did it, my heart was going like crazy because I thought they were going to detect it. But the guards are trained to look for contraband, so they didn't see it slip through. He would give it to my aunt at the end of the visit. She would smuggle them out of the jail, type them up, send them to my parents in England, who started my blog. And it didn't get many hits at the time, but the Guardian ran excerpts, the BBC ran it, and it's still going strong to this day with the stories that I post from other prisoners.